The following program is brought to you by The Highlight Zone and KLRN. Additional technical field support was provided by KVDA TV60. My dad, he used to tell me about his old days, you know, when he used to put sandbags inside of his, uh, their cars, make them real low riders. <laughs> This was public art, you know, mobile public art coming out of our own barrios, and this was very unique. And we thought we must conserve this, 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 um, this art, this, this work, and, and put it in a positive light. So we started having the Lowrider Festival. This is our ninth annual Lowrider Festival. family working together, you know, and you, you take the whole family inside the car, you go cruising. Here in San Antonio, you would cruise military drive. Basically, we're a family-oriented club, and we like to do a lot of things that, you know, with our families and everything. I take my family grocery shopping, uh, take them to the stores. This is our only car. Uh, it's an everyday use. Go take them to school, uh, everywhere. My family is very supportive. Um, my, mo my mother and father, they, they really helped me out a lot. Um, they see that I spend my money only towards my truck. Sometimes they don't agree with it, but then they see that, uh, they see all, a lot of other people into drugs and spending their money, so they, they think this is the best thing for me. I take my family everywhere I go. My son and, and my wife go everywhere I go, unless she says, I don't want to go. <laughs> then I don't take her, but. My son goes with me everywhere I go. Four or five years ago, we had a lot of problems with, with 
the, the, the general population accepting the lowriders in, in town, they would see them as the way they dress, you know, and they would say, no, they're nothing but pachucos, but pachucos in the, the sense of the negative element. A lot of people, what they do is they see a presentation of an individual and they automatically make an image. But after that image is broken, then they see the true person behind that. Sí, sí, yeah. pero no es así. A lot of people think of them, you know, as the worst, you know. Sí, pero no es así. It's not like that. It's just a hobby to. Es un hobby. People that like to fix their cars and like car shows when you enter them. Yeah. Everybody stereotypes low riding. Everybody, you know, they say low riding. Oh no, man, that's he's a killer. He's you know, or a thief or something. And it's not true. We're hard working just like anybody else, trying to make it through life. That's just it. We're regular people. That's it. I would like for the, for the real truth to get out about what it is. You know, it's a form of art. It's creation. It's not gang and violence and shooting like people think it is. This is an art. You look at it and you go to a museum, oh, that's a beautiful art. You know, that's a picture. It's a picture. It's art. It's something that somebody created out of their own heart. Hell, a truck and, and being a, a lowrider is something they create by themselves. It's like this generation to generation, but every time you do it, it gets uh, added on and added on, and it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. These people also work, you know, and when do they work in their cars? In the evenings, at, at night, Saturdays and Sundays. Yeah. Try to call uh, a lowrider between uh, the hours of 10 o'clock in the morning and, and 3 o'clock in the afternoon, it's hard to get him. You know, because he's, he's out there making a living for the family, for the car. I'm not rich and I'm not poor. I, I, I hustle, work, and get what I want to where I don't have to do anything wrong to do it. You know, I do it legit. I make the money I have to make. I don't get greedy. I just make what I have to make just to survive. People that get greedy is, is people that usually lose. A lot of people, they see me and they right away they consider me, you know, a thief or something. And no. it's not true. No, I'm not a thief. I work. I work straight up. No, man, now we're starting to cut here. Now we're, start, now we're starting to cut. Now we're starting to cut. No, man. I pay for everything I got. Straight up. Right now I'm at career counseling for San Antonio College. I work at Villa Rosa Hospital part-time and as a clinical psychologist. I work at a dealership um, and I work in the paint shop. We do minor work, uh, body work, and we do a lot of custom jobs on um, vans and suburbans. And uh, we do nice work. I work and I work. Where I work, I try to get what I can to get my car in what I can. If I have other jobs that I do, I put money to my car in And to have it like I have it Ahorita me falta un poquito más y, y luego componer. I scrape, you know. I went broke sometimes because I wanted to put it together and my family suffer, I suffer a little bit, but we're proud of it. My wife is proud of it, my kids are proud of it. We're all proud of it now. All the, the suffering is over with, you know. To me, the truck is me, because everything that's in this truck, I did it. You know, this is my own sweat and blood and knuckle breaking and breaking my head on trying to figure out stuff to just to make this thing work the way I want it to work. And uh, this truck is a part of me. 75% of my work on the truck, I do it myself. Um, I have friends help me do the body work that I don't know how to do uh, towards like welding or special body modifications. Uh, I get the, the upholstery done at a shop. Um, the chroming I get sent out to get done, but the rest that I can do, like minor body work, painting, I do myself. Lowering, I can do myself. But you don't have to go do wrong to have your car nice. You could do the right thing, work, and still have a nice car and stuff like that. It has to have a motor where I'm not happy with it. I couldn't say I, I like to do landscaping because I hate it. <laughs> you know, I don't like landscaping at all. <laughs> I couldn't grow up to be, a, you know, a doctor or whatever. 
Even though I'm a, I'm a man of all trades, I can do just about anything. I can fix anything that's got a motor in it. I mean, a lot of things that break down in my home that I have never tangled with, and I can fix them. I have saved a lot of money. I never take none of my stuff out to get fixed. I always fix it myself. If I can't fix it, I throw it out. I'm the type of person that I'm a go-getter. If something needs to be done, I have to do it. I'm gonna find a way to do it. Whether, you know, if I have to study or, or go look at somebody else or call somebody else, you know, you know, I'll go through all those changes to find out the answer. And some people don't, they come to me and want me to research it for them. So <laughs> like I said, I'm like a in-between. Whatever somebody needs, they'll come call Victor. I give a lot of credit to my my my, my friend Victor Stewart. That's who I give a lot of credit to because he's the one that got me into this. See, because I was a drag racer. When I ran into him, I was racing this truck at the strips. And then he, it was him that got me into the low rider. See, I really don't know too much about low riding. All I know is it's here to stay with me and I'll continue being a low rider because when I met him, I used to be at this drive-in where all the racers used to hang out. And then I saw him come in there with his truck and I started talking to him and that's what changed my mind. As far as, you know, showing other people, I've showed a lot of people uh, how to do stuff that they would have never learned. Uh, I was teaching at Mansfield. I was a, a teacher at Mansfield Tech for a while, teaching students how to do stuff there for a while. And then, uh, well, just about wherever I go, somebody asks me, well, how do you do this, how do you do that? Well, this was, the easiest way to do it is do it this, this, and this. But the way they show you the right way is like this, this, and this. So you have to combine both of them out of your own self and figure out which is the best way to do it. I can tell you how to do it, the books can tell you how to do it. It's up to the individual to feel, you know, oh, this is the best way that the person thinks it is for him to do it. Does that make sense? <laughs> Zoot Suit uh, added to the phenomena by giving the, the, the low rider a dress code. He would put on his suspenders, his large hat, his uh, three quarter length coat, you know, uh, his, his baggy pants, his Stacey Adams, uh, and it became part of, of, the, of the culture. The Zoot Suit is not really worn as much as it used to be in the 40s. Now everybody cholos down in khakis and stuff. It's still warm, but very rarely you'll, you'll see somebody in a zoot suit. That's, that started out in Mexico, the zoot zooting. It was made famous by an actor, Tintan. He's the one that brought it out, and then it caught on here in the United States, and it was something big in the 40s. You gotta feel it. It's not just like, you know, it's just like the, it's like a, like a seventh sense, I guess. You know, it's just something that's inside your body. And like when you dress up in a pachuco style, you want to act totally different. You know, you feel you know, you're, you're, you're back into the, that, that era and you know how they dress and you know how they walk and you try to impersonate the way they used to be. I mean, I, you can see me today and I'm dressed in jeans and boots and you'll see me in my zoot suit and I'll be a totally different person because the way I feel, I feel like a real back into the 30s. You know, you throw on some 1930s you know, music, and instead of, you know, this, you know, you're like, you know, like you just get the feel of the music, get the feel of the way it is. You gotta feel it, you know? Cholo is like the modern day version of the pachuco. See, because we don't like to sport Stacy's every day. Like the pachucos, that's all they used to sport Stacy's and their zoot suits, and that was it. See, but now we dress a little bit different, you know? Basically, it's the same, you know, baggies or whatever, baggy shorts or everything has to be baggy. Some people say it's Mexican-American, Hispanic, Chicano. 
It's the same thing. It's, they're Mexicans. I mean, what do you expect? <laughs> you can call it anything you want to. But you can only be one thing. It's a Mexicano. Whether it's a Chicano or La Raza and... Uh, they give it different names for, with the different fads, different generation to give it a different name. Back in the 30s, it was Pachuco. And it went up to Chicano. And now it's Hispanic. You know, it's just all the same thing. The Pachucos are the ones that started the history of lowriding. They used to lower their cars, just lower, because back then there was no high-tech hydraulics or none of that. They would just lower it either with bricks or just cutting the coils. They would lower their cars and they would dress Pachuco. Back then, now it just got more and more high tech. But back then, a lot of pachucos, there was a lot of gangs and fighting each other. And a lot of people still think, as a cholo or lowrider, a lot of people will see me and they'll say, well, you're a lowrider. Now, uh, you know, think negative about him, you know. And I'm not a thief. <laughs> We get involved into dressing up, especially it's like, I like to wear a lot of like khakis and little shirts. You really don't, let, you don't catch me dressing up on a zoot suit or nothing like that. I, I don't know, that's not my style. I'd rather dress with a khaki, a nice little muscle shirt and some wainitos and that should take care of it for me. And I really don't really get into the zoot suit and stuff like that, no. You reflect yourself on your car. You fix up your car how you think in your mind, you know, in your heart. It's within you, like I said, um, just whatever going through your mind your heart what you it comes out that's just it like me i got inspired by this one car it's called gypsy rose it's from los angeles it used to come out in chico and the man right in the front that's the world's most famous lowrider that car i haven't seen it for a long he, he was originally from here jesse valdez that's his name but then he went to l.a he got into low riding and everything because over there it's heavier than here and that's what inspired me to build up this one and then i named it sleepy's rolls royce because I had heard of Rolls Royce, you know, the expensive cars. And I was like, well, I can't afford that right now. <laughs> so I just fixed up my Rolls Royce. I saw it building more within the past few years. And then it died back down. And then it picked right back up again. And especially with the magazine now, the Glowrider magazine that's being issued, uh, that's fantastic. And that really clarifies a lot of the misconceptions that people might have of lowriders being bad guys. Well, there's no boundaries as far as lowriding. There's black people, there's white people in lowriding. There's no boundaries as far as the races are concerned. But the Chicanos were the first ones to start that lowrider, and then everybody else picked it up. I'm originally from California, but I've been here in San Antonio mostly all my life. Yeah. And uh, that's where I got my, most of my ideas from, California, when I was up there as a little kid. But as I got down here, I started my car. And everybody would ask me, yo, why are you a brother with a lowrider? And I said, well, hey, you know, hey, I know Espanol and all of it, you know. And you no, know, I get down with my brothers. Everybody's my brother. That's why I fix up my car. And everybody like my car, and everybody stick by me, you know. And that's what I like most of all. There are lowrider bikes where uh, the lowriders like I said, this is a family affair. So you have a kid now, and you and he he has a bicycle. So what you do is you lower the wheels. You kind of put a little bit of a fancy mirrors on it. You put a, a, a fender that's that's kind of low that cover the, the the wheel. You know, it's it's sort of like a low rider uh, bicycle, and that's that's. It, again, it's part of the family type thing, so you have people that do that. Back in my early days, since I was child, uh, my childhood days, 10, 11 years old, I started with bikes. I started taking my sister's and my brother's bike apart and try to make it different, try to make a bicycle built for two before they even came out. I tried to do it with two bikes. Uh, I always was trying to do something different with, you know, whatever, as I grew up. We started off with lowrider bikes when we were little. Me and my brother, Sir Speedy, they call him Sir Speedy. He's the president of the car club. We got into lowrider bikes, and then from there on, we went into lowriding, just kept on going. I started real young, and I was in the street for a long time. And then this got me out of the street, investing money in my bike, staying out of trouble, staying in school and all that. And uh, I think it kept me out. One thing I've seen is a, is a difference in the cars. You go from people that were, when they first low riding first started here real strong, 
they were dropping suburban station wagons, whatever, their family cars, and making lowriders out of them. But it's not how good it looks. It's You take pride in your ride. If you want something mediocre, well, then you drive something mediocre. You go with what you can afford. Some people can afford the best, some people can't. If you know your engine, and I know how to do body work, but it's a benefit for you to get to know me and me to get to know you to work. You, you help me work on my car and I'll help you work on your car. You know, this is the importance of having a club. Este amigo mío, también, como en los car clubs, como pues todos se ayudan uno al otro. Tú, tú vas a salir en un car show, nomás tú, se juntan unos cuatro o cinco y todos te limpian tu carro. Y, y te limpian tu carro bien, hasta cuando ya te bien limpio y luego brincan para el otro. Si acaso tú vas a salir también, igualmente brincan en su carro. Showtime is the club that I'm in right now. We're about uh, four months old. We started it at the beginning of the year due to because our older club broke up. And now, right now, we have uh, seven strong members that are real close and tight and that we're all going to be working together to be the best. You look for perfection, you know, or you try to get somebody that's trying to get started into a club and try to get them to the level where you're at. I mean, just because he has a rundown car, you just can't throw somebody aside. You know, there's somebody that needs a little help, you know, somebody to push them, say, hey, you know what, if we do this, this, and this, your car's going to look this good. And that's the way it gets started. We belong to uh, Camanchero's Car Club right here in San Antonio. My hobby is fixing up my car, and uh, my car club is Midnight Illusions. I got a lot of friends, you know, these are my friends back here. To get into our car club, we have certain standards. You know, not just a primered out car can enter. All right, well, I'm a low rider. Can I get in your car club? No. It needs to be fixed up, you know, somewhat. We'll back them up, up to a certain point, but they got to do something, you know, on their own also. They got to put hydraulics and everything. I belong to a few clubs here in San Antonio. Uh, I was with a South Texas trucker at uh, Mopar, uh, City Mopars, San Alamo, Alamo City Mopars. That's for Chrysler products only. And uh, I, uh, I got out of them. I was with the Midnight Minis, all those mini trucks that go all kinds of ways, uh, the beds, I was with them too. But uh, they fade away. They're not, they're, their heart is not set into that stuff. Their hearts are not set into it. They, first year they all get together, they want to do this and do that, but now all of a sudden they all start fading away or selling their vehicles. And so far uh, I've been with Victor five years. We've been together all the time, and we won't go to a show without each other. Like, you got the Midnight Minis, you got the Kingsman, the First Impressions. There's uh, those Aztecas. Uh, it's just those are like 40, 50 clubs here, and everybody used to help everybody, and then they just started disappearing and fading away. This club faded away, and I just brought it back to life again recently. But uh, this time, I'm just getting older guys that know what they want, because you know, you have a meeting, you're gonna have somebody, well, today we're gonna have a meeting uh, for a car wash and we're gonna wash cars so we can buy the club to go to a picnic or buy jackets or whatever. And the, the younger clubs, oh, well, my mom said I had to cut the grass, I can't go that day. So I just eliminated that kind of stuff and, and let them, I get them started on their club and then I'd get out, get these guys, they got their club started and I'd get out. If you had any problems, you know, give me a call, I'll be more than happy, you know. Oh, well, I want to cut my top. Bring it by, I'll show you how to do it. When we were in church, uh, the floor manual, he, he's the one that came out and said, hey, uh, I want to present this uh, certificate to uh, the president of Camanchero, that, that, that was me. And uh, I feel so proud that I uh, received a representation from the, from the father, you know, from the church. And now uh, we're, we're trying, like I said, we, we can't help him out a lot, but we, we're trying to help him out for wherever we can. And uh, that's what, you know, like working in our cars, uh, little kids, you know, like 12, 13 years old, they go over my dad's house and, hey, this is one of our Camancheros. They help us out with Easter and Thanksgiving or whatever we help them out with. And uh, I feel so proud to help somebody out. 
you like being with your friends and all of a sudden you find a, a female companion. You don't want to be with your friends no more. You want to be with her. Same thing with uh, vehicles or as growing up as a, a teenager. You, uh, you like doing what you're doing at that time, but then it fades away from you. It'll go away. Sooner or later, it'll go away. When the one that gets real big, you get too many people, you start losing interest. That's just like a car club. You get 40, 50 members, and you have to chase everybody all the time. When you can keep four or five members, up to 10 members, and they're united, you know, it's like a family. In Houston, San Antonio, it's on the rise again. See, it kind of died out. Everybody put their cars in the garage, except me and my brother, like I said. Me, me and my brother and the car club I'm in, Los Azteca Kings, low water car. We just kept going. You know, we were a few. People would freak out. We'd be out, you know, we'd take our low out in the street, and they'd be like, man, I thought that was over with, you know? But it's not. It's not a fad. It's a lifestyle. You have to have your heart set into it. You have to have a go at it. In other words, you wanna you wanna be a low rider, a true low rider. You have to stay there and try it. You got it all the way. It's just like trying to be a doctor. You want to be a doctor as growing up and want to be successful. You gotta keep going, going, and don't give up. Friendship is friends. Like I said, it's in your heart. You're my friend. You're my friend. Fine. If I can help you, you help me. That's the way it works. I think that's the way the world should be. You help him and he helps you and, and nobody gets greedy and should it be a better world? I think it would be. And it's important for people to realize the work that these people do you know, to keep the machines going, to keep their marriage going, you know, to keep everything strong and firme. And to, to think of them as something that's negative is to really not understand or not looking at the full picture. To me, the heart or the feel of lowrider is basically you, you're doing it because you like it, not because someone else likes it. Uh, you're doing, you're fixing your car, your lowrider, because that is what makes you happy. That's the way I see it. Um, not because um, you're trying to beat him or compete against them. It's because that is what, that came out of your head, your brain. Nobody else told you how to do it. How you can put up the big front, get, you know, I'm bad and this and this shit, you know. I don't go for all that crap, you know. Like if my gang can beat your gang, I don't have no gang. I'm one gang myself. That's it. A lot of people think of us as people that are looking for trouble where we're not. We're just, you know, cruising around, having a good time. And that's what it's all about. We're trying to show that to the young people that uh, pachucos or cholos or lowriders aren't the people that they think they are. They're not after an image to make popularity by killing someone. They're trying to make publicity by becoming a well-known person who's respected. I enjoy the crowd. I enjoy the crowd, and especially kids around my truck. I want them to grow up and try to do something in their life. And it, maybe it can bubble their blood a little bit. And they'll start as a young age like I did. And I don't get out in the streets like I used to. That's so why it's hard for me to tell you what's really happening in the new generation right now. As far as I know, is they're starting all this gang banging shit, shooting each other. and. You know, before, oh, with well, your mama, with well, your mama. If you have a fight, that was the end of it. Shake hands and you're still friends. Now you get in a fight and they start shooting at you and kill you and then they want to go shoot up your house. And it's not like before. Before, you know, a fight was a fight. You know, not no more. You have a Uzi and shotguns and somebody get, really gets hurt. It's not all worth it. It's not worth it at all. It just makes the, the lowrider look bad. Because, oh, he's in a gang, he's a lowrider. And it's just a stereotype deal that they got that they brought from California. That over there, there's so many gangs, there's so many people there that it's, it's pitiful. All they can do is, is fight. They got nothing else to do. There's different kind of code of ethics. We, uh, in, in the low rider, of course, it's, it's, it's dealing with uh, the respect for one another, the, the knowing of, of how important it is to have a car. You, 
you have a high respect for anybody that, that uh, owns a, a, a beautiful car because they know the dedication that went into that car. I'll see another truck, but I won't use it. I'll, I'll make my own ideas. Maybe I'll change it around a little, but it will be my idea. It won't be, hey, I saw that on someone else's truck. I say, you might have, but as you notice, they're a little different, or mine does something his doesn't, but it's, I, won't, I won't copy someone else's. I saw that movie Zoot Suit. I don't know if you guys ever seen that. That's a good Mexican flick. And uh, when he first drove up in that 39, I told myself, I'm gonna build me one just like that. And about nine years later, there it is. And that, I cruise in that everywhere I go. And everybody says, oh, you gotta keep that in the garage. That's a beautiful car. And if I build it to keep it in the garage, what's the use of building it? Can't enjoy it in the garage, put it in the street. It's like cruising into the past. Everybody's cruising here. Feel good about driving it, you know. We used to have an organization here in San Antonio called SACA, San Antonio Car Club Association. It's called SACA. But then a lot of, uh, like it was hot rods and low riding and mini trucks, everybody was mixed in there. But a lot of people started giving different opinions. Like people that are into hot riding don't know what's up on low riding. And we don't know about hot riding. And then there would be shows where the hot riders didn't appreciate what a low rider had. They would just be like, no, well, this hot rod, you know, this has three carburetors or whatever. And they would see a low rider and they'd be like, oh, what are those? Well, I, you know, <laughs> they didn't know. That's why the Saka broke up. It was, this, it got disorganized, you know, because there was too many opinions going around. People that judged low riders were hot, into hot riding. How were they to judge a low rider? And people that were into low riding were judging hot rods. I mean, we don't know what's up with hot riding. I always loved flames. I always had something with flames on it. It's, my shorts got flames. I got shirts in the house that put flames on it. Everything I have owned that's hot rod always had flames on it. You look inside my hood, it's got flames in there. Something, or I can sit there and be talking to somebody on the phone and I'll be drawing flames. And I don't call my truck the flame because, <laughs> because that's, not, that's not it. What I thought about was uh, getting a color that basically caught an eye, because there's a lot of reds, a lot of yellows, whatever, and wanted something different. Uh, you don't see too many bright blue with pink flames on there, so I thought that's what I wanted. And I tried to stay as much original as I could, but unfortunately, I had to get away from it also. I've never changed my image. I've always liked the 50s. I've always liked the lowriders back in the 50s. I've always liked the, uh, the music, um, et cetera. Uh, it, it's just something that stayed with me. It's part of me. The car is part of me also. I, bought, I had this car for 16 years already, and uh, I bought it original, and I started fixing it up on my own. And here and there, I get ideas, you know, for magazines, and, stuff like that from friends and stuff. And as I get my ideas, I put my ideas into my car. They'll get an artist to do a mural, and then after they do the mural on there, they, 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 uh, they do, use the airbrush. So then when they brush those, and then they take it over to uh, another uh, uh, paint shop and they'll slack it. They'll give it about 10 coats of chalac. So it'll keep that deep uh, look into it. Mi carro, Chicano, low rider, brown and proud, Chicano. <laughs> I've spent already 
around $9,000 into this. I've invested into it. I've go played it a couple parts and I've invested and I still got a long way to go still. A lot of people like the mural on their low rider cars or low rider trucks. Me personally, I like the plain Jane look. I mean, I like it clean, simple. Um, I don't like to put a lot on my truck. I think that crowds it. I mean, uh, maybe if I had a different color, a different paint scheme, and then maybe it'll go with it. But me personally, I just like the clean look and a simple plus. I also, I drive it every day. So to me, that would be a waste of money to drive something with a, a four or $500 mural on the hood. It just wouldn't last me a long time. El carro tiene que japear para, para, para los lados y para para que mire la gente, dije, mira ese carro baila, ¿por qué baila? Porque es el low rider. Eso tiene que ver mucho que ver en el low rider onda. Eso de eso, para que sube y baja para los lados. El mío nomás sube de arriba y, y de atrás. Toda falta que lo componga para que baile de todos los lados. When your car goes up and down, you know, you start hopping it, you get attention right off the back. It might be bad attention or good attention. You know, some people look at your car and they'll be like, oh man, that's that sorry or, you know, that died already. Low riding's dead. Well, I don't know what that fool's doing or whatever. And then there's other people that appreciate it hardcore. They'll be like, eh, that's bad. They'll always go like that. I'll be cruising like that or at a red light or whatever. And they'll tell me, hop it, hop it. That's bad, that's bad, you know, straight up. Vehicles are not built to do that. They're not built to do a uh, hop like that and drop on their tires and their rims and just imagine all that weight coming down on those poor little tires in the front, little small ball joints. All that weight coming down, that's a force. That's like jumping off of a cliff with your vehicle and dropping it. Or trying to get in back of an 18-wheeler in the box and jump out of it and hitting the ground. That's what they're doing. And then they start uh, uh, using the hydraulics to push the car up. They push the car up, up, up until it starts getting off the ground. And, 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 and it goes up, and then it'll fall down. And then you press the hydraulics again and throw the car back up. To raise your collar up, OK? You raise your collar up, uh, you're cool. You're, you can do it. You can make your vehicle do that. I can do that to mine. I can hop mine. My truck, I can make it come off the ground. I don't do it, because that's. You break a ball joint, you're talking about $33. You break the, you bend the front end, you gotta junk the whole truck out or get another frame and put it underneath it. You can break the whole front end off. You get twist the body. Right now, the way the economy is, not too many people wanna uh, do this for their cars, mm -hmm. to their cars. In Los Angeles, there's a lot of hydraulic shops. Here in San Antonio, there ain't no hydraulic shop. They have hydraulic shops for like dumpsters and you know, stuff like that, but not specifically for a low water car. Over there in California, they have low water shops where they juice up your car and everything professionally. Down here, we need to do it on our own. We back up each other with parts and everything. You can't find a good hydraulic system placed around here that can sell you all the parts for a low rider. Like California got access to all that stuff. You pick up a magazine and you have to order it from California. So that's what stops a lot of people from building one here because they have to send away for the parts and the shipping and handling is an arm in the leg. The difference between shows from here in town and from out of state, like California, is um, they have a lot, everybody is into it 110%. Everybody gets into it. Also, the, the award ceremony, um, they give out cash prizes. I've never been to a show yet that has given out cash prizes here in Texas. I lost the keys from the car, so I had to call them. <laughs> I'm lost. <laughs> I don't want personally just to focus on, on the men part of, of the group. The women part, uh, uh, the women 
women's part is also strong in there, the support. You know, it takes a pretty strong woman to allow her husband to spend thousands of dollars on his toy. But it's not a toy for it because it's something that's, that's, uh, it's the family gym, you know. And they also have their particular way of dress, their particular uh, look, you know, and their style. Muchos años ha estado en la lowrider onda, pero a lot of people think that just because lowriders they're mean people, they're you know. Sí, sí, como lowriders creen que es una gang, pero no es. Esto es se trata de dinero. Se se trata de componer tu carro y. There's even old people that have their cars fixed real nice. Sí, ajá. Yo conozco mucha gente que tiene carritos. Old people. old people tienen sus troquitas like in the car shows, 1930s. There's a lot of old people that have their cars real pretty fixed up and how old are these old people? They're maybe like in their 50s, 70s. 70s, 50s, 60s. 60s. And, a, and a lot of car shows that we've been to, there's a lot of like maybe three out of 50 people that enter their cars, you know, three out of those. Yeah. Pero tienen carros, you know, real, ladies, real pretty. Even ladies. Real pretty cars, trucks. Trucks, cars. The women, as far as low riding, a lot of women look up to it because it thumps, because of thumps and because of your hydraulics. You start hopping a car and a lot of girls will stay freaked out. They'll stay like, damn, I like to cruise in that car or in that truck. What? Just, it's just something. They hear the thumps coming down the block and they're like, eee, that's bad, that's wicked. That's a wicked system, I like to cruise in that. I mean, because that's like castigando the streets. You're castigando hardcore. You're running the streets. You're running the show. A lot of girls, but like me, I settled down. I used to be into that, but I settled down with this one girl, Bianca Towa. That's it. What I like next, besides this, is driving 18 wheelers. I always wanted to have one all chromed out and big old stacks and lights all over, which I did for. Two years here in San Antonio, I worked for SMT Truck Line, which they got beautiful trucks. And my wife got tired of me being gone all the time. And she says, either me or, or, or the trucking, and I had to quit the trucking. It was my wife's uh, idea to lower it down when I first met her, and that was back in 1979. So from there, that's when I first started enjoying how to cruise low. Rose is my girlfriend for uh, about four years now. Um, she helps me a lot. If it wasn't for her, I could not set up at a, at a car show. Um, she's there. She knows. She has ideas. If I, don't, if, I, if I can't think on how to set up or display, she'll help me out. Um, she, she's really good to me. My white neighbor that's 40 ish, 50 ish, she's going to say, fat girl, you know. But you know the, the word like, hey man, that's bad. Which means that's good. You know, it's it's so, almost in the same in the same way. It's, it's a bad girl. Man. She's really bad. This type of thing. This is a bad girl that got married. You know, and went with her knight and her shiny low rider to live happily ever, ever after. There's not a person here in, in San Antonio that can dance like me. Even my friends, all my friends says, where do you learn how to dance like that? It's different. It's a different step that just came with me. And uh, well, you need to go to dance to see me, how, how different I dance compared to other people. <laughs> Chicanos are not just conjunto and mariachis. You know, there's, there's also other music that, 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 that you kind of get into, gospel, you know, 
we have uh, country and western. Uh, we, we highlighted before they even uh, went on tour the Texas Tornadoes last year. You know, and um, we wanted to show the different, the different kinds of music that, that uh, and songs that, that our musicians are, are into. I like the big band era. I like the big band music, yep. Uh, oldies, anything that's, that's smooth, that's romantic. Usually that's the feeling of a, of a low rider where you're cruising, you feel that low, slow music, and you cruise with, the, with your jams. Now they got all that. It's a kind of but you know, it's different. Like I said, different generation, different music. Every every time the the generation changes, so does the music. But everybody always listens to oldie, to the oldies. I don't care if you're 18 or if you're 75. Everybody listens to the 50s and 60s music. It's supposed to be the rock and roll era. <laughs> I listen to all the oldies. The oldies, the music when I was a teenager. I listen to that music yet. I don't get into the hard rock or none of that break dancing and none of that. I don't, I can't stand it. I have a radio in my, in my truck. I never turn it on. It's not even hooked up. It's brand new radio. Brand new in a box. I bought it, stuck it in my truck, and never wired it up. I don't have speakers in there. I have antenna, but I don't have it hooked up. Music I don't get into, the music they got nowadays. Spanish music I do listen to it because I was raised with Spanish music with my mother and father. So that's still in me. I like Spanish music. What uh, The orchestra music, orchestra, the good bands, you know, the orchestra, uh, nine, ten, eight, eight players. I don't like the accordion players or none of that kind of music. I, li I like nice, mild music where you can enjoy yourself because I'm a good dancer. Pues mucha gente tiene diferentes, este, uh, como la que le gusta diferentes canciones para pa tener como, como la like energy, para componer tu carro, como ahí, o es canciones viejas y, y me acuerdo, de, ¿sabes de qué? Pues, pues ahora le vamos a componer el carro así, no, no, pues así, no, viste. Pero no, pues, pues mucha gente oye lo, lo que quiera. Como yo oigo música viejas, españolas, inglés, todo, tú sabes, todo mixeado. I also like rap, that's why I put a system. Because nowadays, that, that's what you need to have. It's just something. It gets you hyped up, you need to have a system. Because you see somebody at a red light, they come next to you and they start thumping or whatever, and you're like, damn, I, I need to give me a stereo system so I could compete against it. It's a never ending story, really. I mean, you put 12 speakers in your car, this other guy comes out with 18 speakers. And it just, who can bass out more? A low rider will, will, will get there at 8 o'clock, polish the car, wax it right there on the spot, you know, and clean it completely right there, you know. And for to, to have them stay there when it's raining, you know, it's like breaking everybody's heart. Uh, I think it's important for, for, for us to know that this, 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 this is talk. This is talk that's coming from the barrio. This is something that... Chicanos have, have, have given this culture. When you come to a car show, you come to compete. You know, you can tell who's giving you competition and who's not giving you competition. And you know who's gonna win, who's not gonna win, just by looking at the cars. And that's the way I look at it. And I usually place when I, when I go out there and I take a look at the whole cars and look at them and I say, well, you know, I got a chance. I know I have a chance. And it's, it's a challenge to beat somebody that has nine or ten thousand dollars when you invested like five or six thousand and make your car look just as good as his and he's put into it more money than you have. It's a challenge. I like it. Todo el tiempo estás en un car show como a ver si voy a ganar, a ver si voy a ganar. Hijo, ojalá que gane, ¿me entiendes? Porque aquel está más bonito o este está bonito. Los dos son iguales, pero tienes que tú mismo tú miras a cuál está más bonito. Bien, está, pues, está más bonito que el tuyo, tuyo. Si tú sabes que el tuyo está más bonito, bueno, pues ya la tienes ganada. It's important for us to show and and to let everybody know that that we're there, we'll always be there, competing, 
um, or will always be there in, for the community to help out with charity or uh, fundraisers. It's important, it's important to me to show that, that we care not only about mini trucking, but about other people also. Car shows are important for your self-pride. See, that's all your money in there. You go to a car show to display it for appreciation. You know, some people like it, some people don't. But you really don't care. For the people that don't like it, hey, that's tough. You built it for yourself, really. You didn't build it for anybody. It's for yourself, for your self-pride. That's it. You didn't build it for nobody. As far as throwing a show, if you're gonna throw a show for lowriders so the people can get together and have a good time, it should be free, not have to pay, you know? Uh, if you wanna get the people together and everything, have it somewhere where it's free, where everybody can enjoy themselves and not have to come out of their pocket. The economy now is shit is too damn hard on everybody, you know? Like I said, some people can make it, some people can't. The bad thing about it is the people that can make it don't wanna help the people that can't make it. They don't sell their cars, they, the cars become, becomes part of them. They may not like it, they may strip it and redo it again, uh, but it's very rare that a, uh, a uh, low rider is going to sell his pride and joy. Not at all, not at all, not at all. I won't even think of selling it. As a matter of fact, uh, I've already given it to my son and uh, he's going to take over it and hopefully he keeps it for the rest of his life. There's no amount of money for my truck unless you own a bank. If you own a bank, I even though my truck ain't worth it, you know, my truck ain't worth it, a bank. But I would never give it up. I give it to a, I'd rather see it in uh, burned up in a hole before I would give it to anybody. I chop it up myself. In LA, at one time they wanted to pass a law where you could not drive a lowrider out on the street. They wanted to actually pass it. And all the lowriders, all the car clubs, everybody got organized, which was very good. They all got organized and they went and they fought it in City Hall, straight up. They said, hey, it's just a regular car. You know, we fixed it up or whatever, but there's nothing wrong with it. They, they used to look under your car and they, if they found cylinders on your car, which, in other words, if your car was juiced, if it had hydraulics, they would give you a ticket they would give you a ticket or a fine, or they would arrest you and tow your car away. They would tow it to the city pound, or it'd be all busted up. When you'd go pick it up, it'd be all busted up. And they'd be like, hey, well, we picked it up like that. I mean, it's, the police, and the police are like that here too, here in San Antonio, everywhere. The police, I don't know what's up with them. <laughs> they don't like low riding. They don't like low riding. They can't stop that. They want to, but they can't stop it. Too many people have too much money invested in them. They should have thought of that before they start manufacturing the parts for them. They should have all out them for selling them. I know a bunch of guys that, that are, are good guys, and I know a bunch of guys that are bad guys. But uh, being around all these kind of people, you need to more or less feel uh, you know, that's that feeling again. It's just you gotta more or less feel who's Who's right and who's wrong? You know, you can you hang around with this guy, oh, he's all right. You hang around with this guy and he starts smoking a joint. You know, he's still your friend. You know, what he does is his business, just as long as he doesn't burn you. You know, if he wants to do drugs, well, you know, I myself, I don't do drugs, so I don't, you know, what he does is his business. Of course, a lot of people uh, now are sort of like, well, I have a low rider, you know, and, and they put dingo balls on the, on, the, on the windshield, you know, and. And we have rules to say, well, you, you, you're, you're not really a lowrider, you know, you're just a, a pseudo lowrider, you know, because you, you, you don't know what it is, you, know, th you don't have the feeling for it. You can more or less tell when the person is just throwing something together there and, and, and wants to pass it off as a lowrider. I don't think I'd be happy doing anything else. This makes me happy doing this. I like working on cars. Uh, I don't think I could be a lawyer because, you know, it's just not me. You know, I couldn't be a doctor. Teacher I am because I, you know, I teach everybody. Every time some, you know, they need some help, I'll show you how to do it. I'd rather show you to do it than for me to do it myself. 
I think the low riders are are here to stay. They're gonna they're they're gonna be here. I mean, they've been here for years already, going on 30 years already, or give or take a year or so. But they've been here. They'll be always be low riders, no matter how you do it. They'll be here. <laughs> This program has been brought to you by The Highlight Zone and KLRN. Additional technical field support was provided by KVDA TV 60.